choice of a programming language is a very important decision as it not only affects the performance and maintainability of the software but also dictates the talent pool and community support available. Hi everyone, this is Kavya from Eduweka. Welcome to today's session on the top 10 dying programming languages in 2021. Before we begin, I'd like to address the agenda. Firstly, we will understand what are the metrics used to analyze the dying languages. Then we will talk about the top 10 dying programming languages in 2021. Finally, we will address the summary. Kindly take up this time to subscribe to us and do not forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from the Eduweka YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about new trending technologies, visit our page, the link to which is given in the description box below. So without much ado, let's get started. Firstly, we will learn about the metrics used to analyze the dying languages. To better understand the trade-offs involved in making such a decision, we define and compute three factors of programming languages through online collaboration platforms. For our analysis, we look at data from GitHub and Stack Overflow, two of the most popular programming communities, where GitHub is a platform for collaborative software development. Data gathered from this platform is suitable for measuring the popularity of languages and availability or demand of developers. On the other hand, Stack Overflow is a popular online programming question and answer community providing its participants with rapid access to knowledge and expertise of their peers. We combine the data gathered from the two sources to compute the metrics of popularity, demand and community engagement. These metrics provide a holistic view of the pros and cons of different languages. Now without much ado, let's move on to the main part of today's session and discuss the top 10 dying programming languages in 2021. The first one on the list is Visual Basic for Applications. Visual Basic for Applications is a computer programming language developed and owned by Microsoft. With Visual Basic for Applications, you can create macros to automate repetitive word and data processing functions and generate custom forms, graphs, and reports. Visual Basic for Applications functions within Microsoft Office applications. It is not a standalone product. So there are a few alternatives for Visual Basic for Applications, and some of them are Zojo, Python, Office.js. Unlike the Visual Basic for Applications language used in Excel, data analysis using Python is cleaner and provides better version control. Python is good for dealing with non-Microsoft built products and electronic hardware such as Raspberry Pi. It's great for being able to execute commands from a shell that Visual Basic for Applications does not have the ability to do. You also have the ability to reference PHP or Java pages using Python, which you obviously cannot do in Visual Basic for Applications. On the other hand, Office.js is the main direct alternative to Visual Basic for Applications. It is the preferred language by Microsoft and the Office extensibility team for doing most of the things Visual Basic for Applications was originally designed for. Moving on to the second dying programming language on the list, we have Objective-C. Now, Objective-C is a general purpose, object-oriented programming language that adds small talk style messaging to the C programming language. Now, the idea of Objective-C was to take the purity and low level control of C and merge that with two object-oriented features that would eventually allow companies to customize system libraries that could communicate with the object-oriented layer of Object C. Essentially, it worked, but Object C is a strict superset of C, unlike C++, which is mostly C, but with many differences. When Steve Jobs founded NXT Computer, he brought in some of his former Apple team and others. His best programmers were interested in using a language that expanded on C with the same benefits and system control. This is exactly why they chose Objective C. Some of the alternatives are JavaScript, C Sharp, C++. JavaScript is a lightweight, interpreted, object-oriented language with first-class functions, a very famous scripting language. On the other hand, C Sharp is an incredibly well-engineered language. On Windows, Visual Studio is the recommended C Sharp IDE. It provides a very flexible graphical user interface that you can rearrange the way you want and many useful features such as refactorings and code formatting. Finally, C++ has a very powerful memory management 
and teaches object-oriented fundamentals. Moving on to the third language on the list, we have Perl. Perl is a general purpose programming language originally developed for text manipulation and now used for a wide range of tasks including system administration, web development, network programming and much more. Perl was doing very well in the 90s but why did it start to sink? The dot com bubble burst in 2000 and the first heady rush of web development was about to give way to a sleeker, faster, different generation. Python became a favorite for first-time developers, much like Perl used to be an attractive first language that stole newbies away from Fortran or C. Now, some of the alternatives for Perl are PHP and Python. Why PHP? PHP takes less overhead than Perl, meaning that PHP scripts will run faster than CGI scripts written in Perl, and you will eventually be able to handle more simultaneous users on your site. Benchmarking tests show time and again that PHP runs faster than any other web programming languages. Python, on the other hand, takes a huge advantage over Perl when it comes to code readability. Python's code is a lot clearer to understand than that of Perl, even when reading code after years. With indentation representing the block of code and proper structuring, Python's code is a lot cleaner. Moving on to the fourth dying program on the list, we have assembly. Now, assembly language is a low-level programming language designed for a specific type of processor. It may be produced by compiling source code from a high-level programming language such as C or C++, but can also be written from scratch. Assembly code can be converted to machine code using an assembler. Now, some of the alternatives of assembly is C and C++. C syntax is obviously a lot easier to learn than assembler syntax. C is also easier to use for making more complex programs. Learning C and C++ is somehow more productive than learning assembler because there is a lot more developing stuff around C than assembler. Moving on to the fifth one on the list, we have Pascal. Now, Pascal was developed in the late 1960s. Pascal is an imperative and procedural programming language that was originally designed for teaching programming languages. Today, it's been mostly replaced by C, C++, and Java. Now, C allows using bitwise operators to perform Boolean operations. Care must be taken because the semantics are different when operands make use of more than one bit to represent a value. Pascal has another more abstract, high-level method of dealing with bitwise data and sets. Java, on the other hand, is a simple, object-oriented, distributed, interpreted, robust, secure, architecture-neutral, portable, high-performance, multi-threaded, and dynamic language. A Java program designed as a standalone application has a basic structure much like that of a Pascal, C, or C++ program. Moving on to the sixth one on the list, we have CoffeeScript. CoffeeScript is a programming language that compiles to JavaScript. It adds syntactic sugar inspired by Ruby in an effort to enhance JavaScript's brevity and readability. Some of the alternatives to CoffeeScript are JavaScript, TypeScript, Dart, and Kotlin. Now, CoffeeScript is an attempt to expose the good parts of JavaScript in a simple way. On the other hand, JavaScript is detailed as lightweight, interpreted, object-oriented language with first-class functions. On the other hand, with TypeScript, there is one crucial difference between the two languages, that is, TypeScript is the superset of JavaScript, while CoffeeScript is a language which is an enhanced version of JavaScript. Not just these two languages, but there are other languages such as Dart, Kotlin, etc., which can be compiled into JavaScript. Moving on to the seventh one on the list, we have Ruby. Ruby is an interpreted high-level general-purpose programming language. It was designed and developed in the mid-1990s. Ruby is dynamically typed and uses garbage collection. But why is Ruby dying? Ruby is relatively a more famous programming language, but the question here is, why is Ruby dying? There are two main reasons for this. The first one is that it is extremely slow. The second one is that it has scalability issues. Python, JavaScript, PHP, Java, etc. are the most popular alternatives and competitors to Ruby. Python is faster than Ruby, but they're both in a category of interpreted languages. Your fastest language is always going to be one that's compiled down to bytecode or object code right on the computer. Both Ruby and Python exist a level above that. They're both abstracted. 
JavaScript, on the other hand, can be used as front-end and back-end language using the same language, whereas Ruby is used only as a back-end programming language. JavaScript is also more scalable than Ruby, as it is 20 times faster than Ruby in some cases. Now, part of the reason PHP is more popular with web developers is because it is easier to learn. PHP is also an object-oriented programming language, which makes it easier to be more creative and tackle tougher software challenges. Ruby offers flexibility and readability, while Java offers better application performance. Java follows a strict C syntax in coding, while Ruby allows the programmer to omit a few codes. Java code execution is obviously faster than Ruby. Moving on to the next dang language on the list, we have PowerShell. PowerShell is a cross-platform task automation and configuration management framework consisting of a command-line shell and scripting language. Now, unlike most shells which accept and return text, PowerShell is built on top of the .NET common language runtime and accepts and returns. PowerShell is a programming language, but you're not likely to use it as a primary language in a career as a developer. Now, some of the alternatives to PowerShell are Tor, Putty, and OpenSSH. Tor is a network of servers that are designed to improve internet privacy and security. The software essentially functions as a secure browser which enables connection to the internet through a series of encrypted tunnels. Putty is a free and open source terminal emulator that supports many network protocols such as SSH, SFTP, Telnet, and Rlogin. It also has support for making raw socket connections and it was originally developed specifically for Windows to provide the OS with terminal emulation tools comparable to what was available on Unix-like operating systems. But it has since been ported to other operating systems as well. The third one on the list is OpenSSH. OpenSSH is the premier connectivity tool for remote login with the SSH protocol. It encrypts all traffic to eliminate eavesdropping, connection hijacking, and other attacks. Next one on the list, we have Swift. Swift is a general-purpose, multi-paradigm, compiled programming language developed by Apple Incorporation and the open-source community first released in 2014. React Native, Kotlin, and Go are the most popular alternatives and competitors to Swift. React Native is powered with JavaScript, Thus, up to 90% of the code for your mobile application may be taken from web applications. Building iOS applications with React Native is 33 times faster than Swift and takes about 1 to 5 months. Kotlin, on the other hand, is almost 18 times faster than Swift and it allows you to provide default functionality for a method. Swift is more suitable for client-side development on a Cocoa framework whereas Go is more suited for writing down servers and web applications server functionalities. Moving on to the last dying programming on the list, we have Scala. Scala is a general purpose programming language providing support for both object-oriented programming and functional programming. Now, the language has a strong static type system designed to be concise. Many of Scala's design decisions are aimed to address criticisms of Java. Now, some of the alternatives of Scala are Kotlin, Python, and Clojure. Now, a Kotlin-based application will be easy to code and debug. As a consequence, application performance will be higher in the case of Kotlin when compared to other JVM languages. On the other hand, Python has libraries for machine learning and proper data science tools and natural language processing. Whereas Scala has no such tools, Python can be used for small-scale projects. Although Scala static typing would normally translate into speed advantage over Clojure's duck typing, Clojure does support type hinting, which can speed up code considerably. With this, we come to the end of today's session on top 10 dying programming languages in 2021. If you have any queries, please feel free to comment below. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!